Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 6, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries today, we got a quick walkthrough by Brad through the latest version of LockyBot. It, it, as usual, uses email to propagate and then an Excel spreadsheet in this case, which of course will use macros in order to load the malicious content. So nothing terribly exciting here, but if you came across a sample like this in your environment, well, Brad did the reverse engineering for you. And usually I don't talk much about breaches, but there have been two very large ones just within a week. So want to spend a little bit time on that. First one, of course, the big Starwoods or Marriott breach. And then this week we heard about the large breach affecting like 100 million users at Quorum. What I find is that a lot of people get very excited about these breaches, but you really sort of have to take them a little bit into perspective to see how much they actually affect you. First of all, your password. Your password, well, you should assume it's going to get lost. So use different passwords for different sites and then having your password lost on one site really shouldn't be an event for you. Secondly, payment card information. Payment card information is probably the least dangerous information that someone can steal from you given that in particular for credit cards, you're not usually liable. So there's really just the inconvenience of getting a new card. What really sort of made the Marriott breach stick out is that apparently a lot of their users had passport information stored with Marriott. The only thing you can do in this case if your password information got compromised is really well get a new passport. But even if you do so, well, you get a new passport number, but all the information that typically is contained in the password, like like birthday, for example, and city of birth, uh, that's uh, now lost. And there's very little that you can do to really recover from that. Now, Marriott announced that they may actually pay for people's new passports if their passport got lost. So we'll see how that all works out because uh, that's not necessarily cheap. Cost in the US uh, around 100 to $150, I believe. So if you learn about a breach like this, if you are affected, uh, really it's important importance of take inventory of what information got lost and then figure out, well, how much do you care about that information? But overall, assume that all information that you did give online to another company probably will get lost at some point. And then we had the register, we have a story with one facet of the ransomware game where a company in the Ukraine claims to be able to decrypt your files. The particular company that Checkpoint logged into goes on the name of Dr. Shifro and well, it claims you just have to send it some files that got decrypted by ransomware, pay a fee and uh, they will decrypt the files for you. What they apparently, however, are actually doing is that they actually will pay the ransom for you. They will add their own markup to that and then decrypt your files. Now, I've heard in the past of what I would consider legitimate consultants that will help you pay the ransom, but they should be transparent that this is what they're doing and what fees they will be charging you on top of whatever ransom payment they are making for you. This can be helpful for companies that, of course, critically depend on these encrypted files and have difficulties, for example, dealing with bitcoins or making the payment. In some cases, and apparently that's also where in part Dr. Schaefer's margins came from, it is actually possible to negotiate a lower ransom if you know what the buttons are that you should hit with the particular ransomware. Now, for certain ransomware families, there are also a number of free tools that allow you to decrypt encrypted files, but that very much depends on the ransomware family, what files got encrypted, and what key material, if necessary, you still have available. And then again, it may make some sense to hire a consultant to help you with that, but that again should be something that this consultant is transparent about what they're doing. And of course, always good in a case 
case like this to hire someone that you knew before the ransomware hit. And then we got a new version of Google Chrome, version 71. Of course, a bunch of bug fixes, but also a couple of changes in APIs and such that are security related. First of all, there is a special feature now to block abusive advertisements. Secondly, there is a warning, a new warning that pops up if Google Chrome thinks that a page tries to do deceptive billing. For example, that flag sites that require your mobile phone information, which can sometimes then be used for subscription billing without the user actually noticing it. Also some change to the web audio API and autoplay and the speech synthesis API which apparently was used by some fake tech support scams is now only accessible if the user first interacted with this site. And finally, uh, today on Wednesday, we also have a webcast uh, with Heather Mahalik. Uh, at SCOTE is an Elm Parler, which is sort of a follow up to our annual panel that we have at the RSA conference. Starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, and I'll add a link to the show notes. Thanks. That's it for today and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.